Yo, what is up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with a quick Ableton Live slash Max for Live video tutorial and it's called Don't Sleep on the Shaper. The Shaper device, I'm not sure when it got implemented, but it's there now inside of the 10.18 or whatever it is I'm running. And it's right here and it's a Max for Live device. Because I can map this shaper to virtually anything inside of Ableton Live means that I have virtually any type of shaper that I want. So I'm just gonna show you how I used it in this demo project, but I only made this demo project to show you about the shaper. So what I'm gonna do is just delete uh, the two instances of shaper that I have. So what I have on this channel um, is first of all, a filter, and I probably don't need that anymore. I actually started with a pad on this. Um, so what I have here is a filter on this vocal right here. And what I wanna do is use the shaper to shape the frequency cutoff of the filter. So I'm gonna go turn on the filter. And what I'm gonna do is just click map and then click filter. And you'll see that we're getting that. Very basic. If I click right here, we'll get a more interesting pattern, which is the one I used in the intro. I actually brought up this part just so it stayed open a little bit more. But these work just like any other one. You can snap to the grid or not. You can turn up the grid size or the resolution. You can turn how quickly it happens. Uh, if we want it to happen, you know, slower or quicker. So really cool uh, bit of tech here. And we have the depth, so how much of this, if we want it to come happen a little bit less, not as dramatic, we can do that here. We have offset and phase, and we can actually come in, I believe it's right here, and choose the minimum and maximum, just like you can with MIDI mapping. Uh, and you can see here that we can have more than one thing mapped to this at a time, and we're actually gonna use that in a second. But for right now, uh, this is what we're looking for. So now I'm gonna do another shaper right here. And what I'm gonna do for this one is map to the gain of the utility. Now before you play, look at this. We're getting uh, to 100%, which is, I don't know what it is these days. What I wanna do is come in here and make sure, I double click and just type in 50. So it only goes up to the zero dB essentially. And come back over here. And then if we put this one in, but then, take this over. And these work the same way I was saying before. Um, if you hold Alt, you can adjust the uh, slope. You can click to add a point. And what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna turn off snap and let's just bring this like this. And as you can see, kind of we're setting this up to be a sidechain device. Now, the reason why I've put this here is just because if you leave it up near the top, you'll get clicking and we don't want clicking. So, now we're getting ducking. Now a really cool thing about Shaper on top of everything else that I've already shown you is if I come right here, I can actually map this to a different channel. So if I come in here and go to my base and then I have a utility on there, I can map the gain here as well. Jump back into there, make sure it's at 50 again. And if I solo this, um, I've got my sidechain set up, but I'm not using sidechain routing, I'm just using the shaper on a utility gain. Now I can map the actual uh, volume of a track to, I just choose to do utility whenever I'm making any volume changes to a channel. I always do the utility because I like to come in and be able to mix later with the volume slider. And as you can see right now, because it's mapped, I can't pull the overall gain value up or down uh, relatively to whatever's being mapped. So just click X to get out of there, come back in and make sure, I don't know what it was, like negative three or something. And uh, now I can still get my gain ducking to happen here on the utility, but I can adjust the overall gain level here as well. Boom, now sky's the limit. As always with these things, I'm just trying to show you how to get started with them and give you kind of an idea of how you might use them in a real world setting. But really, I highly suggest you get in here and just start mapping stuff and making interesting uh, patterns in the shaper 
window over here. I mean, it's really, really phenomenal that that's built inside the Max for Live. I don't know how I missed it, but now that I know it's there, I'm going to be using it all the time. So anyway, there you go. I uh, hope that information was helpful. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. I'm Joshua Casper, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>